In this tutorial, we're going to create a custom WordPress Gutenberg block step by step. To create a Gutenberg block, you need a little bit of knowledge in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, although you don't need to be an expert in any of them. With very little knowledge, by the end of this video, you should be able to create your own custom Gutenberg block. So let's get started. So we're here on the ideapro.io site that we do tutorials and testing. And then in our VS code, we have ideapro.io website opened up. And here in the plugins folder, we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name this something unique. So I'm gonna say ideapro custom block. And that shouldn't conflict with anything else in WordPress that we've done, all right? So now inside of that folder, I'm gonna create a new file, and that new file needs to be a PHP file. I like to name them the exact same as the folder um, that it's in. So idea pro custom block dot PHP. And so there is our PHP file. Now we're gonna open up some PHP brackets here. And this is the start of our plugin. Now we need to create a plugin to put our custom block in, all right? So here at the top, we're gonna to add some comments. And that first item in the comments here is gonna be our plugin name. And that's gonna be the idea pro custom block. There we go. And then we're gonna add a description and that description is going to be the idea pro custom block for contact information. So what we're gonna build here is we're gonna build a, a really simple Gutenberg custom block that you can uh, use on multiple websites so that you can just pop it in there, you can create that custom block and then you can add the company name, phone number, address, and stuff like that. It's gonna be a very easy block, but it, it'll show you, give you an idea of where, where to go from there. All right, first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a function, and all your function names, again, need to be unique so they don't conflict with anything else in WordPress. So we're gonna start ours out with Idea Pro, which is our company name, Idea Pro, and then we're gonna call it our custom block script register. Okay, and you can call that function whatever you want, but this is going to register our JavaScript with our plugin, okay? So here we're gonna do an add action, and I like to put the add action below the function. Um, some people put it above the function. You can do either one, it's not gonna matter. I like to put it below the function because usually the function's what I gotta change if I'm gonna change something. I usually don't have to change the add action, so I like for it to be above the add action. So this first argument in the add action is going to be in queue block editor assets. And then the second argument here is going to be our function, which is a, a callback function here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do in here is we're going to enqueue a script. We're gonna do wp enqueue script. Okay, so this is a WordPress function. So the first argument here is going to be our slug, which is a unique identifier for this script. So we're gonna do idea pro custom block. Okay, and where that shows up is, if you look at the source code of the page and you find this script, it'll have an ID. And that ID will be this idea pro hyphen custom hyphen block in there, all right? So then the second argument that we're gonna put in is going to be the location of that script file. So for us, we're gonna put it in the root of this folder. We're not gonna put it in like a, J, a JS folder or anything. You can put it wherever you would like. Um, for ease of the video, I'm just gonna put it in the root of the folder because really for this um, plugin, for this custom block, we're only gonna have two files. We're gonna have this PHP file, and then we're gonna have a JavaScript file that runs everything else, all right? So I'm gonna put it in the root. And so to do that, we're gonna say plugin directory URL, and we're gonna do underscore underscore file 
underscore underscore. Now what that does is it says look at the plugin directory URL and the current file that we're at. So it's going to be just in the root of that folder. Okay. And then we're going to do a dot or a period. And then we're going to, what our actual JavaScript file is going to be called. So we're going to say idea pro block dot JS. So now we haven't created that file yet, but we will here in just a second. All right. So this next um, argument here is going to be an array of arguments. And what this array is here, it's the dependencies that are required for this JavaScript to work, right? So the dependencies that we're going to need for this to work is WP blocks. And the next one is going to be WP I18N, which is the internationalization. So if, you're, if your plugin um, is going to work with other languages, that internationalization helps with putting those languages in there. So, and then the last one that we need is the WP editor. Okay. So that is all we need for the dependencies of our script. All right. So this next one is the version. So we're going to say true. Now what that does is it says, if you've looked at the source code of a WordPress website, you've seen a JavaScript file and then it has question mark version is equal to, what that does is every time that WordPress updates, like if you're on WordPress 5.3 or something like that, it will say your, drop, your JavaScript file question mark VER is equal to 5.3.1 or whatever the version number you're on. And what that does is it, it kind of refreshes people's cache. So if, if WordPress updates and changes things, or if you change something, that having that variable after that refreshes everyone's cache so the site works correctly. This last argument that we're going to put in is um, true or false. We're going to use false. So what this one is, is it's, it's in footer. So if you want this JavaScript to be in the footer, then you would say true. We want it to be in the header for this example. So we're going to say false and the default is false. So you could actually completely leave this, this argument out and it would automatically put it in the header. So that is our in Q script file. And from there, that's pretty much all the PHP that we need in this video, in this tutorial. Later we're gonna, and maybe in the second video we'll do um, in queuing a style sheet that will style the look of our contact information on our contact page. But I wanna keep the video simple for this, so we're not gonna do that in this video. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to create this idea pro dot, our hyphen block dot JS file. So we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna call it idea pro block dot JS. And so then we're gonna save that, that way it's uploaded. Now that we have this done and we have our block file here, we can go over to our site, look at plugins, and here is our Idea Pro custom block plugin that contact for the contact information, and we can activate that. Now, in our plugin, we did not put in the author information and, and all that stuff, the URI and all that. You can do that in your plugin. I wanna keep this video short so I didn't put it in here, but you can do that and it would show up all here. All right, so now we can get started on making our idea pro block.js file. So the first thing that we're going to do up here is WP. I do not want that WP escape dot <laughs> blocks. It keeps wanting to put that in there. So we need to register our block type. So we're going to say register block type. And so the first argument that we're going to put in this register block type is a unique name for our block. Now we're going to preference this with idea pro. So anything that we, any blocks that we make, we would put idea pro in the front of that. It's kind of like a namespace. Um, it's just going to be unique for idea pro. And then we need to have a unique name for our block. Again, for this one, we're just going to call it 
custom block because we know that this site doesn't have anything else in there like that but we could name it contact custom block idea pro custom block contact information whatever we want to name it so then the next one is going to be an object now inside of this object is where we're going to really put in everything all right so the first thing that we're going to need is a title and this is going to be a string here and so we're going to say idea pro custom block now where this shows up is whenever you go to select a block in the block editor so we could name it contact information let's do that let's do company contact information all right okay so whoops did not mean to do that so then here the next one that we're going to do is we're going to do icon now the icon is um, you can use SVG icons in here. I'm not going to go into that in this video. That probably needs to be another video though. I'll make a note of that and, and put that on the list. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to our browser and we're going to look for WordPress dash icons. All right. So if you open up this developer page here with the dash icons, any of these icons that are here can be used for your block your custom block type right and there's a bunch here for all kinds of different stuff and you can use any of these so we're just going to pick one here let's use the hammer just for fun so this hammer is going to be what we're going to use all right so this here is what we're going to use as our icon except we're going to get rid of the dash icons hyphen so we're just going to use this part here as hammer. So in here, we're going to put hammer. And then the next one that we're going to use is the category or the next argument here is category. And what that is, is if we come over to our page here and we go into our contact page, when we click on this, it gives us different categories of blocks that we can use. So we've got text, we've got media, We've got design, we've got widgets, theme, you know, embeds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into design. So we're gonna come over here and it's gonna be a string again. And we're gonna say design. All right. And then the next one here is going to be the attributes. And what these are going to be is this is going to be any of the information that we want to save in our custom block type um, to be used, right? Anything we want to save. And this is going to be an object, not that kind of an object. There we go. That, we need to be an object like that. All right. And so the first thing is going to be company name. And that is going to be a type string like that okay and the next one that we're going to be using is company phone and again for this example we're just going to use type string all right and then let's do company address and again that's going to be a type of string Um, company address two, which is line two. And again, that's going to be type string. And we need to change this one to go away. Change this one to a lowercase c. There we go. All right. And then we need the um, company city. We could have made this a little bit easier and combined some of this, but we're gonna break it out here. So it's gonna be a string company uh, state. 
type string and company zip and this is going to be a type string also and the reason why is because if you put this as an integer some zip codes start with zero if you're doing a canada address they have letters in there so it we're just going to leave it as a string for this example all right so we've got company name company phone address city state and zip and for this example that's all we're going to do we could add you know the hours of operation and you know other things like that but in this example that's that's where we're going to stop it okay so then we need two um two more arguments in or uh, properties in this object and one is going to be the edit and the next one is going to be save. Now, what these are, everything on the admin side of the site is going to be uh, the edit. The save, you would think that that's where you're gonna put the information to be saved from the edit side, but that's actually what's going to show on the front end of the website. So I'll explain that as we go, all right? So here in on the edit, it's going to be a function. All right, and so inside of here, we're gonna put props, which are all the properties that are pulled in from the WP blocks, okay? And down here on this save, it's also gonna be a function with props. Down here, we can, for now, we can just say return null, and we're gonna leave that as it is for right now. All right, so now in here, we need to return a React script. If you've not dealt with React, um, there's an easy way to work with React if you're familiar with um, HTML. The way we're gonna write our React, we're gonna return some information here. Now, if we come over to our browser, and if we go to babbljs.io, um, this is a script compiler that turns your scripts, your HTML basically into React. If we come over and hit try it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a label. So this is just HTML. And we're gonna put in company name. I spell it right. Company name. And then we're gonna put in input type is equal to text name is equal to company actually we don't even need name in there let's take that out so input type is equal to text and the value is equal to and then we're going to close that out all right so the value is going to equal the company name and so i'll show you guys in just a second how to do that first i want to talk about what this error down here is now in React, you have to enclose everything. So we want to come up here and put this into a div. So everything is gonna have be inside of this container div. Whoops, there we go. All right, so see now it doesn't give us the error and it actually gives us the React information over here. All right, so now we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it for our next one which is company phone and again the um, and to keep this straight here we're going to say placeholder is equal to company name now if you look when we do this over here in react it gives us the react create element and every element which is our div which is our container div and then we have react create element label react create element input and if you look at this label it's null and then it's company name so if we were to put in a class for this label it would change this null to an object and then kind of like it's done here on the input it would write out the different um, properties of that object, like type, value, placeholder. So if we come up here and did class and said, you know, 
company, whatever company name, right? And then we come over here and look, now it's changed our label, our second argument here from null to an object and put in class company name. So that's how React works and breaks it down for putting, to, to put that HTML in there, all right? So we're gonna take that out because we really don't want that in there because we really don't need it. All right, so company phone and then the text and the value placeholder is equal to company phone. And then we're gonna copy this again. And the next one is going to be address and company address. I'm doing this really quick just to give you guys an idea. Could have made it shorter, I guess, but you know, say line two. And this would be the um, This would be like suite number or something like that. All right, so company city and state, all right? And then last is the zip code or postal code, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna call it zip code for this. Okay, so now if you look, we have all this information here as a React code. So we're going to copy everything from here down. We don't need this use strict up here at the top. We just need this React information here. So we're going to copy all this down to here. Copy that, and we're going to come over to our code, and after this return, we're going to paste all that in there. Now, if you look at the my VS code, it now shows that my file is red up here and has some red over here. It says basically that we have an error somewhere. And so if we look down, it will tell us where the error is at. And so the error is right here with the save. And so what has happened is, is we forgot to put a comma here. So now we have a comma there and now we have no red. We're gonna save this. We're gonna come over to our browser here, to our page. We're gonna do a hard refresh. And which a hard refresh is command shift R on, the, on a Mac. I'm not exactly sure what it is on Windows. I'll put it on the screen here. But basically that does a hard refresh to make sure that we've got all that new information on the page. All right, so then we're gonna come over here to our blocks and we're gonna come down to the design section and here is our hammer with the contact information. So if we click on that, now it gives us all of this information, company name, company phone, company address, all this stuff, but there's really no line breaks in it. So what we could do is come over here to our Fable, and we could put in line breaks or we could enclose these in divs. Let's do that. Let's put in a div before each of these labels. And then we're going to put in a closing div after each of the inputs. Okay, so input, 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 and input. Now that's still going to put our label next to our um, thing. So we're gonna put in some breaks here just to break these labels from each other. Just so it makes it look more like a little form. So we're gonna add these breaks and all elements in React need to be closed out, all right? So now we have our new React code over here. So we're gonna copy all of this. It's getting pretty long. Save that, we're gonna come over to our code and we're gonna take everything out from after the return, all right? So we've got return and then we're gonna paste that in. We're gonna save it. We're gonna come over to our contact page and we're actually gonna remove this block. Remove company information. Let's update. We're gonna do a hard refresh again to refresh all the information on the page. 
Now we're gonna come over to our design section, company contact info, and now we have more of a form looking style on, on our contact block. Now, it doesn't look pretty. Again, in the next, next video, we'll add more style to the look of this and style on the front end and all that. I wanna get this done so you guys can see how it works, okay? So now we need to create the um, update information and the save information. So if we come back over to our Babel, if we come in here and we say values are, we're actually gonna remove the double quotes here and we're gonna make this a an object and we're gonna say props dot attributes dot and then this is gonna be company name. Now if, where we're getting that information from is the this is the attributes here. So if you look at our function here, we're calling props, right? So these properties, these attributes, all this information is coming through in props. So props.attributes.companyName. So we'll come back over here, props.attributes.companyName, right? And so each one of these values are going to be an object. Props.attributes dot company phone. I'm going to copy this to save a little bit of time. So then our value here is going to be company address. And then this one is going to be company address two. And then this one is going to be company city, whoops. All right, and then this one's going to be company state. And then this one is going to be company zip code. Is that what I called it, zip code? check company zip oh I did shorten it to company zip all right and so we're gonna come over and copy the react information here and we're going to put it from here all the way down to here we're gonna replace that all right now if we save that and we come back over to our contact page we're gonna remove this block and we're gonna update we're gonna do a hard refresh we're gonna add in the block here and now we can type in idea pro llc and phone number and all that information the problem is is whenever we click update and we go out of pages and come back into contact our block is there but it didn't save the information in the uh, in the details here. So what we're going to do now is make it to where it will save that information. All right. So we're going to come back over to our um, Babel here. And for each one of these, we're going to do a on the input field. So let's, can we make this wider? No, we can't. So let's do on the input field. So after the placeholder here, we're going to do a on change equal to, and then we're going to put in a function name here. So we're going to say update company add uh, name, because that's what this one is here, update company name. And then we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it throughout all of these after the placeholder. So this one's going to be company phone, this one's going to be company address. Now you could combine these into a single um, function, but we're not going to. We're gonna keep it simple for this video and it makes it longer, but it makes it a little simpler. So company address two, and then after the placeholder for city, we're gonna say company city. And then after the placeholder for state, we're gonna say update company state. And then after placeholder for the zip, we're gonna say company zip. 
All right, so now we have update company name, update company phone, address, address to city, state, and zip. Now, if we come over here, we've got more React code. So we need to copy this, come over right after our return, go all the way down to here and replace that. Okay, so now if we tried to save this, upload it and use it, we would get an error because we don't have these functions that we've created here in the uh, in our in our code. So this on change, we don't have company name, company phone, all this. So right here above the return in the edit section, we're going to create function and update company name. Okay, and then we're going to say function update company phone and then there's a function update company address and we could copy and paste these really quick it would probably be a little quicker so boom address two not one come on two there we go and we could do the whoops address state and zip Okay, so now we have these functions defined here, and now we need to make these functions actually do something. So in each one of these, we're gonna say event. So we're gonna copy that, event, 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 event. And so that gives us the information that we've changed, right, each time. And so then here, inside of here, we're going to do props dot attribute set attributes props dot set attributes and then in here we're going to say company name is going to be from the event dot target dot value it's giving me an error because it needs to be an object inside of there all right so props.attributes now company name comes from our attributes here event.target now this event is called in from our function which is the on change event right so event.target and then the value is the value of our input field okay so now that we have that we can take and copy all of this let's put a space after that so now we have props dot like that and so we're going to come in here and change this one to from company name to phone and then we're going to add this one in here and we're going to change company name to address change add this one and this one is going to be address two and put this one in and we're going to change this to company state and then props.set attributes dot company zip okay so now if we save that we're going to come back over to our contact page here we're going to remove this block and we're going to update again do a hard refresh we're going to come down to our contact information here and this block encountered an error and cannot be previewed all right so we need to come down and look at what we did wrong oh we forgot our city so let's duplicate this one put city here city there we go and company city and we're going to save that and we're going to come back over here and let's remove this block update again we're going to do a hard refresh come in grab our block boom now we got it all right so now we can start adding in this information so let's do idea pro llc company phone 928 idea pro and we'll put in parentheses 4332776 so company address is 2901 East Greenway. Number 54171. All right. Company city is 
Phoenix, state is Arizona, and then the zip is 85032. All right, so now if we hit update and that information is there, we come over to pages and we come back to contact and now all of our information is saved into our block. So, all right, so now that's at the point that we have the block working on this side, we have all of our information uh, saved in there, and then now we need to change the front end for, or, or write the code for to show up on the front end. Because if we come and we view this page, let's click preview, desktop, preview new tab, there we go. So now we have nothing showing up here because our block doesn't actually show anything to the front end, all right? So now we need to write the code for the front end. So this is all of our edit information here. And now we come down here and we need to change this information for our save, which is the display on the front end, all right? So we're gonna take out the null here and we're going to come back over to Babel. We're going to remove all of this information and you could copy that into a um, notes or something like that into some information so you can keep it later and repopulate it here instead of having to type it all back out. But I just deleted it. Oh well. All right. So for the um, this information here, for the save information, we're going to, again, create a div because everything needs to be enclosed in a div and it's given us an error that we haven't closed out that div, right? So now we've got that out of the way. And so now for company name, we want to be, um, let's do an H3 and it's complaining again because we haven't closed it out. So then in here, we're going to do a property or an object and it's going to be props dot attributes dot company name again we're pulling that from um, our attributes here props attributes company name again because our function here is pulling in all the properties which is all of this information here so props dot attribute dot company name Come back over here to Babel. And so then after that, we can put in, let's do a, we need to do the address and the address part two, I guess is what you call it. So we could just put that in a span. And putting in a span will make sense later on whenever, the next video, whenever we do more of the styling side of things. All right, so we're gonna say props.attributes dot company address and then we're going to copy this and do another one that is the company address two and then we're going to create this to be a div and this is going to be the props dot attributes dot city company city we're going to wrap that in a span because we want all these on the same line and so then let's come up here and break there we go so now city we're going to copy that and we're going to say state and we're going to come down and zip Okay, and the one we didn't add is the company phone. We also didn't do company email in here, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna put in company, because you could do the email the same same way, all right? So here we're gonna do props.attributes.company phone, like that. Okay, so now we have our React code over here. We're gonna copy all this and come over to our code and we're going to paste it after the return. So now we're going to come over to our contact page and we're going to go to pages and we're going to go to contact. 
Now, if we, we have an auto save up here, if we come over and we refresh this, it's still not going to work. And the reason why is because our custom block that, that we used here, when we put this in, the return for the save was null. So we need to remove this custom block and we're gonna update, get rid of that auto save, I don't care. We're gonna refresh and we're gonna do a new block because our save information has changed. So we're gonna say idea pro LLC, company phone 928.433-2776, um, company address 2901. We're not gonna worry about, I guess we can put Greenway, number 54171, city, Phoenix, AZ, 85032. All right, so now if we hit update and we come over to our contact page and we refresh, now we have Idea Pro and our phone number, Greenway, Phoenix, Arizona, 85032. See how we don't have any space or anything like that? We need to come back over to our Babel and we need to add in a, you know, we could add in city, comma, state, zip, all that kind of stuff. And we could still come over and copy all this, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So now we have our company information there and it is working properly other than we need some spaces and styling and stuff like that. And that's where I want to add in the next video, I want to do um, classes on here that we can add padding and spacing and stuff like that to it. But that's going to be in the next video. And with that, I hope this helped you understand how to create a custom Gutenberg block. Hit the like button. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, punch the bell. If you want to see more tutorials like this, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.